game does a very good job of keeping the Dungeons and Dragons vibe. Um, all of the missions and quests you receive actually go into instances, which you can go into by yourself or you can go into with the group. Um, they always have different levels of uh, difficulty. When you're free to play, you have to go in the order of difficulty. Once you play through it once on normal, then you can unlock the higher difficulties. But if you are paying for it or if can you, you want to pass, oh, um, you're awake. you can skip straight Oi, to the higher you difficulties. You ain't undead, are you? Okay, let's clear these out for basic movement and the hit system. Can you okay. talk? Speak to me! Okay, so we walk up. In these uh, tutorial and let's plays, I normally don't uh, read Follow through me. the text. If you would like me to read through the text in this game, since it is very story driven, just the leave a comment below, and I will definitely take your advice Follow on that me. One, if whatever you want to see is what I provide. So let's follow this little rogue up here. Please follow me! Okay, well, we keep following him. <laughs> Here we are. So, you want a weapon or not? Okay, of course I want a weapon. Okay, I guess it's giving me a light crossbow to start with. I'll get a repeater one later. Okay, so we will equip this right there. I am not going to actually put those on because I'm going to summon bolts, which I should have here somewhere. I don't see it. Summon my Iron Defender here. This is actually his bar here. There we go. Heal spell there. My disabled device I don't need to have up front. My open lock I don't need to have up front. I'm going to start a second one here. We'll put this in this corner over here. These are going to be abilities I don't really use a whole lot. Okay. There we go. So things like, I believe that's Sneak, yeah, Sneak, Revive, I'm not going to be, hopefully he won't be dying too much, my Repair Ability, we'll keep this main bar for attacks, which seems to be a pretty common thing, let's grab a scroll, Search I'll leave on here because I'm going to use it quite a bit, and then Summon Defender, I will do that also. Well there we go, we are ready. Um, that is strange that I do not see... Okay, well, it is not slotted. Uh, my guess is I probably have to rest and then I will have the ability. Yeah, I have unprepared spell slots. So as soon as I get to a point where I can rest, I will go ahead and do that. So for the time being, I will equip that ammunition. Okay. So let's see what he's got for me. Salimus is waiting. Salimus is at the grotto. Tell her to keep her knickers on. Okay. So this game is very different when it comes to combat than standard MMOs. The way it works is when you left click, you attack. Very action based. So the way, also with the crossbow, I have to click once to reload, click again to fire the arrow. And that goes for the repeating crossbow also. Um, now the actual, it's not really first person controls to, per se, because uh, when you do use the attack button, it does make a roll, like a D&D roll, against your stats and your abilities and things like that. Um, so you can be directly, directly on the guy, like dead shot on the guy's head and miss. Um, or you can, you know, be off to the right of his arm a little bit and hit. It's, it's really based off of this is how you target, and then you use the ability, uh, the left click ability to, uh, to cast. Okay, so this screen is the choosing your... Um, quest information going in one of the instances. As you can see, there's a bunch of grayed out difficulties at the bottom. This specific one solo, normally you have a normal option also at the beginning, and then hard elite and epic are not not doable the first time unless you were a payer, a paying member, or you are um, someone that had unlocked it in the store. Uh, this specific one, since it's at the beginning, is a solo difficulty only. You'll be seeing a little bit of the combat coming up here. It is uh, definitely is one of the Is this Selimas, the cleric you were sent to find? 
and that will be the Dungeon Master. He takes you through, just like a normal D&D game, um, taking you through all of the adventures um, for each Who quest. Who are you? He will be your uh, narrator, so to say. Oops. <laughs> First, okay, I shall surround us with a protection spell. Her spell temporarily prevents you from dying, though you can still suffer injuries. This effect will wear off when you leave these caves. Yeah, best now, spell ever. Let's be about <laughs> protection from death. <laughs> I definitely want that spell. A gate? There must be a way to open it. Try up that ladder. I'll remain here and bash any Sawagan trying to sneak out. Okay, dope. So you just ladder up and over, space bar to jump, and then you just fall. You hear the shuffling and wheezing of some creature coming from the corridor ahead. Okay, I got my crossbow loaded. The corroded lever at the rear of this corridor most likely controls the gate where the cleric Selimas is waiting. Okay, so in order to use something, you can either click on it or you could just use the E button, which is the contact sensitive button. Very useful since it is an action game. You're keeping your mouse click on at all times. But no time to dawdle. We come to assist you. Onward to glory. Selimas isn't too honked at me. Thanks for putting in the good word. Don't you worry, Salimus. I'm here to watch your behind now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not too honked, I guess. The evil aura is oppressive. Sawagin are behind this door. A charge! What, it's empty? Boy, where's the bloody Sawagin? Look, the door closed behind us. It oh, would no. be logical to assume... Trap! There are more of them up there. Stay alert. Not too bad. Only lost two hit points total. Oh, here we go again. The righteous smite you! <laughs> wow. She must be a paladin. <laughs> Combat in this game is very active. So Definitely keeps you on your toes, you and it's one of the of best me? parts Come of the game, in my opinion. Fight. With the uh, lengthy storylines within the adventures and the, uh, the, the interactive nature of the adventures, the, you can beat it more than one way kind of aspect. It really makes this fun. Such is the fate of evil. Now, let's find a way out of here. Yes, such is the fate of evil. Indeed. Can't pick this. Anyone see a key? Curious. I just stepped on something. A latch. Good work! I see a key down there. Who's up for a swim? Me, of course. Hydrophobia <laughs> mean anything You grab the you? silver key. Time to swim for the surface. Normally you get a breath bar, but being that he is not human, I'm a warforged, I actually don't have to breathe. I knew you'd come in, Andy. This way. Okay, so locked door, so I have the key, so just unlock it. There we go. I'm weary. Let's take a moment to rest. Okay, so these two ah, shrines... I've still got plenty of stamina. I the... can go all night long. <laughs> Why don't you, you scout ahead, then? <laughs> Just don't get yourself in trouble. Now you're talking. I'll take a little peep. Plenty of stamina all night long, huh? Uh, the one on the right with the moon is a, re uh, a restorative shrine. What that does is it allows you, when you find one, to rest at it. 
gain your hit points and spell points back. It does take a little time to do so, so if there's enemies around, you might want to dispatch them first. The one on the left is a resurrection shrine. When somebody goes down, like a party member, uh, you can take them back to the resurrection shrine and bring them back to life. Now, the restorative shrine, uh, depending on the difficulty you're doing the specific adventure at, actually takes a longer time to be able to be used again, and sometimes you can only use it once. I know on the lower difficulties, it's every five minutes or so, if I remember right. So I'm going to use this, hoping it lets me uh, memorize some spells, because I have spells to put in those extra two slots there. I'd like to get my enhancement spell for my AC and my conjure bolts. If you're done resting, go and scout ahead with Jeets. Okay, so if I do this... So we got Conjure Bolts, and we'll do Enchant Armor. Okay. Okay, so Conjure Bolts, and Enchant Armor. So first thing, I'll enchant my armor. Conjure a bunch of bolts. I should have done this before I rested to get those spell points back, but it should be okay. This isn't very long in here. Whenever you're a spellcaster, you want to make sure you're using your spell points well. Um, they are a precious commodity, and wasting them is never a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these in here, and now it will auto-reload with my conjured bolts, because the conjured bolts are the first ones in my bag. Let's see what he's up to. Crikey! Oh, jeez. That's uh, quite a trap. Okay, thing is that I can disable traps. We're going to go ahead and search the area, see if we can find a way to do it. There we go. It's right there. This is a skill check. Nice. If uh, the difficulty of the trap is higher skills, than your you skill, you, you wouldn't be able first. to disarm that. So you want to make sure you keep up in that skill as you get higher in level. There we go. I like how you had me go first. That's, you two uh, having that's interesting. Fun? It's time for us to go. The High Priestess should be up ahead. The onus for much suffering rests squarely upon her slimy, webbed hands. <laughs> Jeez, melodramatic. There she is, performing some kind of profane blood magic. Of course. I blood will open magic. the door. Prepare yourself. Ready? She sounds like one of the heroes Go. from City of Heroes. <laughs> oh, got their attention. Red name signifies a higher level. That obviously is going to be more difficult. If I have a whole group here with me, I'll be okay. One-on-one, -on -one, it could definitely be a challenging fight. There we go. According to our employer, there's a secret passage around here somewhere leading to Korthos. You boys look for it. I must cleanse the profane energies around the shrine. Let Salimus do her thing. You and I'll take care of the important stuff. The treasure. The treasure. Definitely the important stuff. I like the ring of water breathing, since I don't need to breathe. Um, armor is a little different when it comes to Warforged. Warforged don't put on chest piece, pieces and stuff like that. They put on what they call Dawson's. Or Dawkins. I believe it's Dawson. Um... That's what these are here. It, they also get put onto my uh, oh, rogue iron defender. Are tingling. There's something fishy in this room. Try searching so around. Go ahead and do that. So it looks like this is the one that I can wear. There we go. It changes the ability, uh, the view of my armor, the the look of my armor, and as you can see, it also gives me repair plus three, um, which is really good. Um, as you go later, it'll raise your raise your AC, things like that. Um, that one's for my pet. What's this? Cold touch module. That's also for my pet. Some thieves' tools. Okay. Uh, I always forget how to get to the pet screen. Not that one. Although we'll go through that one later. There it is. Pet. Okay. So we could just bring this right in there. Bring that right in there. So this is going to uh, give him an enhancement bonus, uh, enhancement bonus 
um, making it more durable as AC goes up, but then it also gives him Cold Touch, um, basically giving him a status modifier uh, to his attacks, and then this is also giving him more AC. So we've just helped him out there. So let's go ahead and head up here. You feel a stiff draft from somewhere in this room. Perhaps the hidden passage to the village is in here. Okay, so what that was, is that was my spot ability I talked about during the character creation. Um, what that does is because my the difficulty of the specific hidden object is lower than my ability modifier, I was actually able to spot this. So now I would search, since I, I have an inkling something's there, because I just spotted it. Found the secret and passage? there it is. Go on, open it then. Just like in D and D, when you got to do skill checks, it's exciting. Brilliant! Tidy lashes and pints up the wazoo. Here I come. <laughs> pints up the wazoo, huh? The way out is up ahead. But first, I want to reward you for your assistance. Please oh. come speak with me. I will let you reward me. And to you, brave cleric. Not a paladin; she's a cleric, but close enough. Okay, looks like. We'll go with repeating light crossbow. Okay, so we'll swap these out. There we go. Show you really quickly what the difference is. Three in a row. It reloads just as fast, but you do get to shoot three in a row. This specific crossbow has a fire effect also, which does extra fire damage, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so Corthos Village is the uh, tutorial area. You actually go through a story, uh, a story arc of quests here. They're pretty awesome. And uh, we will go through all of those as soon as I am joined by Dark Relic. Okay, see you next time.